the myth of the 20% down payment is still going strong. And a 20% down payment on a home with the way today's prices are and inflation and student loans, trust me, I speak from experience on this, uh, but the thought of putting 20% down on a $350,000, $400,000 house, which is the average going rate in Richmond, where KCM is at right now, but the thought of putting 20% down on that kind of money that can be a pretty scary thought that can make the idea of home ownership kind of improbable for a lot of people, right? That's enough to make many people think that home ownership is not an option for them at all, which is why a lot of today's presentation is going to be talking about some of the resources that you can use to educate your buyers about all of the options available to them. Now, I do want to point out here at the top really quickly and make it super, super clear that our job is not ever to talk somebody into buying a home that they can't afford, right? That's never, ever our job. We don't want to put people in that position. Our job is to make sure that people are educated about any potential resources that can help them overcome some of the initial down payment challenges that they're facing, right? For a home that they can afford. So I just like to say that here at the top, uh, remind us our job is not to sell somebody a home that they can't afford, okay? That's never the goal. Now, what home buyers may be seeing and hearing in the news and on social media right now is that the median down payment has gone up. And you can see up here, the latest data we have shows that the median down payment for first-time buyers is only 8%. The median for all buyers is 15 and repeat buyers put a median payment of 19% down. So definitely higher for our repeat buyers. But um, at the bottom up here, you can see a list of the sources showing where this down payment money is coming from. And I'm not going to go through the whole list, but the one that I want to point out is highlighted loan or financial assistance from sources other than employer. 1%. That might be a little too small for you guys to see up there, but it's only 1% of people that get loan or financial assistance from sources other than their employer. Why isn't down payment at the top of this list? Uh, again, a pretty simple answer. Most buyers just aren't aware of all of the options that are out there. And honestly, it's probably more than you're even aware of. So we're going to talk about some of those options in just a second. Now, there are over 2,000 programs available across the country to help people with a down payment. And actually, over 39% of these programs are for repeat buyers who have owned a home in the last three years. So even though that median down payment for repeat buyers might be higher, there are a lot of programs out there available to help them as well. And um, I do have a quote coming up, actually, that I mentioned here, but there are a lot of these programs that actually help with closing costs as well, which is something we'll see in a minute. Now, I do want to take a second to talk about some of the buyers that we've seen or worked with in maybe the past year or two who got a mortgage application declined. There are a lot of reasons why that can happen, credit issues, their debt to income ratio is too high, or in some cases, maybe they just didn't have enough savings. But if the reason is that they didn't have enough savings, a study from the mortgage reports found that 33% of the client mortgage applications were eligible for home buyer assistance. That's equal to one in three. So one in three buyers with denied mortgage applications were eligible for some sort of home buyer assistance. That's huge. And that same analysis also found that on average of those buyers with declined loan applications who were eligible for these programs, they're typically eligible for not just one of the programs, but for 10 different home buyer systems programs, That's 10 different programs. So I do want to give you a few different examples of the programs that exist so you can see just all of the different options that are out there. But really quickly, I think this is where I have the quote. Yes. Um, let's first really quickly just talk about the purpose of these down payment assistance programs. According, again, to the mortgage reports, down payment assistance programs exist to help home buyers who are short on cash to find the funds they need to purchase a home. DPA programs provide cash assistance toward your down payment and sometimes help with closing costs too. Indeed, some could cover your entire upfront costs, though these programs are typically meant as a supplement to boost your existing savings. So... It's important that it's clear we're not saying that buyers don't need to have some savings. They definitely do. But these programs are designed to help supplement those savings. So now let's take a closer look at some of these programs. And again, these images might be a little bit too small for you all, but you're going to get a copy of the slides tomorrow. And any of the resources that I'm talking about in these slides within the PowerPoint that you'll get 
you'll be able to download the PowerPoint and you'll be able to see in the notes section of the slides that all of these resources that I'm talking about are linked, okay? But let's see, a good example to start with, um, let's see, is the, is, let's see, yes, sorry, a good example to start with, um, Down Payment Resource highlighted that there are 42 U.S. buyer assistant programs across 14 states that are designated specifically to support Native Americans on their path to home ownership. Another example given by Down Payment Resource is Home Buyer Assistance Program specifically for service members. There are 61 programs designed specifically to help them build, buy, or renovate a home. And as we know that sometimes veterans need to make adjustments to their home when they return, this is, this is a great option. Um, another great option is Teacher Next Door, and this is a great program, and it's actually not just for teachers, but also for law enforcement, firefighters, EMT, government employees, nurses, uh, and other healthcare employees. This one's got a pretty actually long list of folks who are eligible to apply for this national home buying program. And there are other entities with programs whose goal is to increase homeownership among minorities, which is something we have been talking a lot more about here at KCM lately, um, especially with all of the multi-gen housing trends that we've been seeing. So um, another example of one of these programs is the Hispanic World Project, and they want to achieve a 50% or greater rate of U.S. Hispanic homeownership. And another one, 3 by 30, aims to increase Black homeownership by 3 million net new homeowners by 2030. So again, these are just a few examples, and I actually am going to get ready, I think it's my next slide, to share some specific sources where you can turn your buyers to to search for programs that they might be eligible for. Resource number one, HUD. Uh, HUD is a fantastic source. And again, you're going to be able to find that linked in today's notes, so don't worry about it. But this um, HUD actually allows you to search for different programs by state. And I am actually going to share these links in the chat as I go through them, but you will get them tomorrow linked as well. But here is the link for HUD. Resource number two comes from the mortgage reports. So we saw a couple things from there. And this resource also allows you to search by state, but it's an interactive map. So I do really like this one. It's, it's user friendly. And then you know that we like the rule of three here at KCM. So last but not least, resource number three, down payment resource, which I've cited also a lot here today. But this site allows buyers to answer a few questions to determine their eligibility for a ton of different programs. And based on their responses, they'll be able to see how many different programs are available to them. So this is another really great resource that you can connect your buyers with. Now, all of this being said, you should absolutely, absolutely have, a, if not multiple, at least one recommended lender who you trust, who you work with, who cares about the people that they're working with, that you can direct your buyers to as well, because they are another great source for finding information about especially state-specific programs for home buyers. But again, this is a relationship that really needs to be an important part of your toolkit. This is, you know, not somebody you just kick your buyers off to. This is somebody you want to have a working relationship with, to be going back and forth um, so that you can be involved and know all of the ins and outs and resources that are available for your buyers too. Okay. So we're going to end on, well, we're not ending on this. Next, we're going to dive into your KCM tools. But as far as down payment goes, this is what we're going to end on. So I just want to let you all know to please use this information. Go back through your list of prospective buyers. See who might be able to help with this information. A lot of people just need to be made aware of the program so that they know they have options. You can help these buyers rekindle the dream of homeownership that maybe they thought was no longer an option for them uh, as we go into the second half of 2024 and 2025. It is an achievable goal for a lot of people. They just need the resources and know how to get there, which is, of course, where you come in. And also providing these resources allows you to demonstrate your value and your expertise. You're going to be ultimately building trust when you're providing these resources with your buyers. And um, good time to remind anybody who may have joined late, you are getting the replay of this session tomorrow, as well as the PowerPoint slides. And any of the resources we talked about are going to be linked right in the notes section of the PowerPoint slides. But bottom line here is the lack of a down payment shouldn't keep your buyers from owning their home.